Let's even smile. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'll be showing you how to make a very, 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 very delicious vegan way. You know. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be showing you how to make a very delicious bean ball, also known as black eyed peed fritter, and originally known as akara, which is a Nigerian <laughs> bean ball, as I said, made out of black eyed peas and onion and peppers and chili and deliciousness. And I will be showing you how to make that today. Okay, I'm just gonna soak um, about a cup of beans. These are black eyed beans, dry. If you have extra of the bean paste, you can use some as a, like a hummus kind of thing. <laughs> Um, with blend hummus, you can you can use it in sandwiches. You can toss it in pastas, and you can eat it by itself with vegetables as a snack. I'm making a burger as of now. This is the fries burger patty that I'm just gonna add with some of that tomato cucumber and some lettuce, and we're done. And there we go. This is the second try at making akara. Uh, yesterday, when I tried to make it, I realized that very late, I realized that I was actually supposed to be using raw uncooked beans and then soak them overnight. And I used cooked beans that we had in the freezer, thinking uh, I skipped a step, I'm smart, and um, <laughs> guess I wasn't. So, this is our second try at doing it. And these are our beans, these are two cups of beans that we're soaking. The black eyed pea beans that we that we use for originally for akara if you don't have this you can use brown beans as well they work just as well i guess um especially because these beans have a very unique flavor i think that's why akara is known for these beans um anyway and then here we have half an onion chopped a quarter of a red pepper a quarter of a large red pepper or half a medium red pepper one maggie chicken cube it's this one in case you don't know and yes it's vegan and here we have half a sprig of rosemary and half a thumb of ginger these are my own personal twists that i'll be adding and we also have one habanero pepper <laughs> this is actually quite large i think i might actually not use the whole thing but we'll see i'll taste it and we'll see if it's too chilly or what and yeah these are the optional ingredients that i'm adding i'll also be adding some crushed garlic two teaspoons of crushed garlic um most people don't prefer to use these two extra things they just use these things some people don't even use the red pepper they just use these things and i'm going to also be adding salt and pepper to taste so let's begin with our beans as you can see the skin of the beans is coming off um and what people usually like to do is to remove the skin for a smoother um consistency of the bean paste but I, I'm trying to figure out whether, whether I, I care. I don't know if I care that much, honestly. Just like when you make hummus, some people prefer to remove the skin of the chickpeas to make it much more smoother. So I guess the same um, principle applies here if you want a smoother bean paste. And so an easy way to remove skin, for those of you that do care, I'm going to give you a tip. You can put this in the blender and pulse it a couple of times. That'll help to release the skin and the skin will float at the top and then you will get the skin off for most of them. Now I soak these beans overnight, but if you don't have overnight to do that, you should at least soak them for four hours. I think that's just the standard time that you should use to soak beans in general, um, at least four hours. I'm gonna put in water just above so that the skin can float. I mean, it makes sense. The skin will be lighter than the beans, and or rather, the beans will be heavier, so the skins will float at the top, and it will be easier for me to extract them. All right, then I'm gonna pulse. Put it on pulse. There we go. A very lengthy process see this is why i don't care for the skins honestly look how long this process is anyway we put the water in the bowl let it settle let it settle let it settle 
once it's settled then once it's settled then we can remove our skins from the top the cream of the crop how easy that is that's what we're trying to do just remove the skins at the top just want to show you how easy the skins are coming off see here are all the skins there they are the whole point of removing these skins is to give you a really white paste that's if you even care that your paste is white or what um, it's not like the skins are poisonous or anything, obviously. Um, but you can see we've, we've actually take, managed to take out a lot of skins. A lot of skins. There. Those, that's just skin. That's just skin. And more there. So, um, I think I'm gonna... I just wanted to show you how to do it. I don't actually care, really. So I think I'm gonna stop soon. I'm gonna just remove more. See what I mean when I say the skins will float. Now we're just gonna blend this into a nice paste. Like I said, you don't have to remove the skins, um, especially if your blender is that powerful. You really don't have to. We're just gonna put in half a cup of water. To help it blend the less water you can put in the better because you want it as thick as you can get it because the thicker it is the more nicer and the better the texture of the color in the end you can stop recording me please. While we did our first blend, we are going to be adding in this. So we just wanted to blend the beans first to ensure that they were blended. And then we're going to add this and blend it again. And don't worry about over blending. There's no such because what we're trying to do is to incorporate air into the bean paste. And what that does is it allows it to be fluffier because there'll be more air incorporated. So um, it's much better for you to blend it twice or even thrice if you can. So yeah, I'm just going to be adding in our vegetables that we'll be adding in and our fruits, I guess, because this is fruit. I'm just going to chop it up so that it's easy to put in. And this is our, our ginger. I'm not adding in too many things, like I said. We're not, we, can't, we don't want to add in too many things. We just want to add an onion. This is our chicken. Maggie key stock that we chopped up so it's easier to blend inside. We're also going to add in our rosemary. I don't see why I should chop this up. I'm not going to because the blender will do all the magic for me. And then our habanero pepper. I'm not sure if I want to use the whole scotch bonnet. I don't know. I'm going to use half first. Then we'll see. Yeah, I'm going to use this part first. <laughs> then we'll see. And this is going in the blender with the rest of the, the beans. And we're just going to blend this up and yeah. Now that we've done our second blend, we're going to be doing our last blend, and that's where we're going to be adding in our crushed garlic. Could have added it in the first time, but it's fine. Um, this is a teaspoon of crushed garlic. We're not adding too much because um, we don't want the garlic to overpower the natural flavor of the beans. And in there, I've added in a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of white pepper, and one and a half teaspoons of salt, and a teaspoon of garlic. Now we're going to blend it for the last time. Okay, I've tasted it and I think I need to add more in fact I know I need to add more scotch bonnet because I want it to be more hot and I'm gonna add in an extra teaspoon of salt because um, yeah it's not it doesn't have enough salt okay and now we're just gonna pour out our batter see how thick it is yeah, that's what we want. I can literally smell the beans. Pour it out. See how much air is in here. Uh -huh. This is what we want. 
Don't show this part yet because I don't trust since yesterday. Okay. What is going on? What is it doing here? The best kind of spoon to use is the one that's dipped because that allows you to be able to get the nice shape that you want so it's not just too regular and most of them have a consistent shape. Keep your cara on medium low to ensure that it cooks on the inside properly. And let's spoon it in. Okay. We put in our first one. Um, I advise that when you're using anything to scoop it, you should try and use something with a dip. See? A spoon with a dip like this because that helps to shape your um, akara to be a bit more rounder and that most of them have a, at least a consistent shape see now they're mostly going to have that kind of a shape that roundish shape and the rounder they are the prettier they'll be if you even care uh -huh. we're just going to fry it for about three to four minutes on each side and ensure that your your fire is on medium low we don't want it too hot because remember our beans soaked although the soaking did help to break them down a bit we don't want them to not be cooked fully on the inside so this one should be done and can be flipped look at that beautiful color look at that how golden you want it um will determine how much longer you cook it but, but just to cook it in general is two to three minutes on each side and then the longer you keep it in the fire the more golden it'll be the more beautiful color it'll have this is so beautiful oh my gosh it doesn't turn out like yesterday's this one should be done okay um another benefit okay. Okay. Another benefit of soaking your beans is so beans have this we'll call them natural sugars that they have which the digestive system Generally isn't able to break down very easily as easily as other things, you know So soaking your beans helps to break down those sugars and helps to fasten that process so that by the time you cook them It won't take long to cook. That's another thing soaking them helps to cut down the cooking time so then you can be really sure that if you you soak your beans overnight then they most likely and most definitely will be cooked when you're frying them here and you don't have to fry them for that long or be worried that they won't be cooked properly because you soak them overnight try and soak them overnight otherwise four hours at least will help and then also you won't be gassy you won't have flatulence because of the sugars found in beans okay thank you <laughs> that's all and now they're done they're golden on both sides look at the shape this is the beautiful shape that we're talking about although not all exactly the same size they generally have the same shape, which is what we want. Just gonna take them out now. Put them onto a paper towel. If you don't have, you can use a dishcloth um, or a tea towel, whatever you call it, and let the oil drain there because you don't want it to be too oily or soggy. So this will help to catch the oil. I like them really golden and crispy somewhat on the outside. I just want to get to hear the crisp. That's crisp. That's what I like. I like crisps. You can make them as small or as big as you want them. But as I said, I want to make burger patties. I want to make burger patties with these. So that's why I'm making them so wide. This is a perfect shape for me. Make a sandwich with them. You can eat them. Usually they eat them for breakfast with porridge or grits as others would call it you can ha make a sandwich as i'm going to do you can eat them by themselves as a snack it's a street food that's usually eaten in nigeria so you can repurpose it the way you like however you see fit i'm going to make a delicious burger with it and speaking of burgers let me show you how i make my burger sauce while those do the magic okay um, to make our burger sauce we are going to need, depending on how saucy you want your burger and how much sauce you want or how many burgers you're making, I'm going to be using two teaspoons of mayonnaise. This is the brand that I'm using.
one teaspoon of tomato sauce. And then season it with some of this rosemary and olive. I was gonna use the garlic and herb one, but since I put in some rosemary for the bean paste, I figured this would help to complement the flavor really well. I'll be adding in just about a quarter teaspoon of the rosemary. Okay, that's We're gonna be adding in some of this. This is our homemade jalapeno paste that we made. Um, and if you wanna know how to make that, you can let me know. But it's basically just chili and and oil and salt and garlic blended up and then cooked on low heat and then voila that's what we have let stop showing this first order of business we're going to get avocados now please just look what the birds have done to us. So our apples. The apples are good. me. Ooh, look what we have here. We have some apple that I'm gonna be slicing up. Okay, and here I have our two buns that I lightly toasted. This is our akara. Doesn't this look beautiful? It looks so beautiful. Tomato, cucumber, avo, lemon juice for the cucumber, and this is the failed, repurposed <laughs> akara bean paste that we made yesterday when I ended up using cooked beans instead of raw beans that were soaked. So this is what we're going to be using as a sauce. Because I want to show you how you can repurpose your mistakes, guys. Mistakes are not forever. There's always a way for you to move forward. And this is my way of showing you that some, you can repurpose your failures sometimes, all right? Just because you fail doesn't mean it's the end of the world, right? Okay. Just gonna put that on. I made it exactly the same way that I made Akara, except I used raw beans, so I'm using it as a paste. And then we're gonna be putting in our patty. Which one do I want? I want this one. I'm gonna put down our patty. So, so excited. And then we're going to use our sauce on top. On top. It's spongy. Like, you wouldn't believe this is beans. You think it's flour, and this is really good. This is really good. Look how fluffy it is on the inside. Look how airy it is. Perfect snack. It's in with anything. Since I have leftover burger sauce. Why not? Mm. This is really good. You can make it for parties, but like much smaller and make it as a finger food. I made a burger with it. Other people have it for breakfast with bread. Other people have it on its own after school as a street food in a jail. This is really good. Anyway. Put this down. <laughs> mm. Thank you for watching. Um, this is to show you how very easy and delicious Akara is to make. And you can make it into anything that you like. This is my Akara and I hope that you can make yours too. Bye, until next time. <laughs>